Today I'm sweating so much I stink. And we're gonna develop a blink. Hello and welcome to another Solana tutorial. This time we're gonna actually develop a proper blink, not just a demo blink to showcase what blinks can do, but no, an actual productive blink. Blockchain link. Form our smart message. But blink does sound cooler, that's true. So we're gonna build a blink. Since I didn't get any better ideas, I am gonna do the thing with the fee redeemer. So the idea of closing empty token accounts to recover some rent. You know, everybody wants some free sol. And if you can do that one click through your Twitter feed, then that's an easy thing to do, right? So that's where we wanna get to. First, we're gonna develop that blink, like the functionality, the actual building of the transaction, which last time we kinda left out. But really, when you've been watching my videos for a while, then you should know how that stuff works. The more interesting thing is then afterwards actually publishing that blink and seeing what we need to do in order to get it listed and work as an actual blink on mainnet through X with the wallets. So that's gonna be the difficult part. I hope that we get there today and I don't spend all my day developing this blink, but we will see. So let's get started. Okay, so last time we developed this blink using the Solana Create Depp scaffold. And basically all we did was this route where we have the get and the post. If you don't know what all that is, previous video, get is basically just Give me the information for this blink, tell me what it can do, tell me what actions it has. And then the post, that is where we actually build that transaction for a given user. So we get the user pub key from the request body and we build the transaction as we want to build that transaction. And then we serialize it, put it in the response, send that to the user or to the action client who then presents it to the user and then the user can decide whether or not they want to assign the transaction. You know the flow of the blink. We've looked at this. So before we can actually, you know, publish something, we need to change that part where we actually, you know, build a transaction. So hold on, let's run this real quick. Run dev. And then remember we went to dial.io and to localhost to see our blink. Great, so that's working. So we have two actions without a parameter and then three actions with one parameter each. And this action is not registered. The goal would be to build a proper blink and actually register it today or attempt to register it today and figure out how difficult it is later. Okay, what are the things that I need to change to make this a proper blink? Uh, maybe the image. I hate this. I'm not a designer. I don't know what to put here. Did the fee redeemer have a logo? Not really, right? <laughs> I mean, this is an image from one of my first ever videos where we did the AMMs, where I explained the coins, whatever. Should we use that? I mean, it's ugly as F, but really it's the only thing I have. <laughs> you know what that is? That is testing if even with an ugly image like that, you can get your blink whitelisted. That's it. Which is figuring out if that is enough to actually publish a blink. That's what we do, right? Right. It's not that I'm too cheap to pay for a designer. No, 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 no. It's because I'm testing stuff here. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's a good point. Anyway, in our get request, one of the things that I did here is I chose an icon that is from somewhere completely different, right? That is already hosted somewhere. But what if I wanted to serve something that is like local, like that I have here? I put it in my web public logo here. What if I wanted to serve that? The path for that would be logo JPEG. So that that's my path. That's what I want to serve. So what do I do? I can, of course, just write localhost 3000 logo JPEG here. That would work. Nope, it would actually not work because no HTTPS. There we go. That will work. But I mean, it will only work for me, <laughs> obviously, as long as this is local host. So I want to, you know, replace that part with the actual origin of the request, right? Like if I host it somewhere, then put that link. And I think I can get that from request dot. How did that go there? They do it with new URL from the request url origin got it got it got it I, I got this first get the request url 
as a URL from request URL. The icon URL is a new URL, takes the path and then the base. So the base that will be our origin. So the path will be slash logo JPEG and the base will be request URL origin. And that should be localhost 3000 or whatever origin I'm on at that point. So that should work more generally then. And uh, just put that in here. Let's see if that still works. Seems to still work. Wonderful. So that's a cleaner way to do this. Then Solendis demo blink. Uh, closing empty token accounts is what this blink does. Title, fee redeemer. Because that's the name I came up with back then. I'm going to stay with that branding. This label is actually not important because the actions is what's important. But apparently I do need a label. Otherwise this thing complains. So whatever we stay with go because that's not shown anyway. Weird spec, but it's the spec. Okay, some action. That's the actual label now. Clean up. Do we want to support different things for now? Let's just have this one. Let's get this one to work. And then maybe I add some stuff with parameters. For now we have one action. Actually, is that allowed in the spec that I ignore this thing and have one action? It should be, but I don't know. Let's test. Yep. Looks good. Fear redeemer. Recover rent by closing empty token accounts. And that of course doesn't do what I want it to do yet. Oh, are we on DevNet? Should we do no, should we stay on definite though? Let's stay on definite because that's way easier to develop than also serve it for definite though. Okay, to the post. That's why we actually build the transaction. We get the user pub key, stays the same. And then getting the action parameters. Actually don't need that part because we're not working with parameters yet. So we have the user. Fee pair will be the user. We give him one transaction with one required signature. And ideally I would want to say something like closing X token accounts, where X is the number of token accounts that we close. And we have a limit of how many we can close in one transaction. I think I can fit like 20 something into it before the transaction gets too big. And some users might have more. And the problem with blinks, I can only ever send one transaction. I can't provide several, so the user will just have to click several times. That could be actually interesting, having a button that shows me how many accounts we can close. But how do I do this? This is so, okay, so I'm not like, I'm not particularly happy with the way blinks are designed. Like there's something from a dev perspective that I just, ah, that doesn't feel right because I can't properly mess it, like give proper like feedback. If I just want to tell the user, hey, you have no token accounts to close. How do I do that with this message? But my response needs to be something that contains a transaction. I just want to give you the message and the message. This one is actually never displayed. The message from here gets displayed here. I can have an error, but that is the same for all of the users. So if I want to, for a specific user, give some information, first of all, I need to make him click first to get the public key from the user. And then I can't even give him a proper message. I can only give the message for that he sees when he's signing. I think maybe he sees that when he's signing. I'm not sure. Does he see that when he's signing? So yeah, this is pretty annoying, must admit, because I would like to tell him, hey, you have so many more token accounts that you can close if you click the button again or something like that. I mean, the basics are simple, right? You make an action, you make an action with a parameter, but to really get it to a point where you can productively use it, that has like more requirements. Like even such a simple thing as this fee redeemer stuff, where you just close empty token accounts, I feel like I don't have enough flexibility with blinks to do the things that I want to do. Well, yeah, let's get there when we get there. Let's actually build some stuff. I'll need some helpers, something like a get empty token accounts for a given user. I have developed this somewhere, but as a practice, I'm going to do it again. Import from SBL token, which I don't have installed SBL token. 
Two vulnerabilities. Right? What could possibly go wrong? One high severity. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Let's ignore that. See, I mean, I don't like, still don't like TypeScript. And boom, there we have some stuff. Get token accounts by owner. So that's one of those not so nice RPC calls. But the alternative is that we use Helios and the Helios does let that serve us all the to Although no, because they don't serve empty token accounts because they say, well, that's not a token that the user holds. So actually I need to do it like that. We found that out when we talked about the Helios does digital asset standard, which is developed by Metaplex. Yeah, yeah, but Helios is the indexer that I used. Whatever. So the user is the one that I want it for. The filter, let's see, for a mint or for a program, I would filter for a program because then I'm sure that I can close them all with this token program. Token CAC is still the one that is used the most, so I'm just gonna build it for that. And again, I could have two actions in my blink, one for the token CAC, one for the token 22. Actually, if I would want to do that, I would probably be like token program default to the normal token program. Boom. There we go. Then I can easily tell that function to give me the instructions for the other token program. Anyway, what else do we need here? And that will give me a promise for a response with get accounts response. Okay. So let's print it real quick and see what comes back here for my user for this connection and for the token kek. Only if I post, so only if I click that, will it actually build that transaction? I'm not interested in that yet. I'm interested in my log, which I think this is the output that I'm getting empty because, well, yeah, we don't have empty token accounts, which, you know, fair enough. Let's get us some. So I created myself a helper key pair, airdrop myself some soul. And then I can say as token create account for wait is used to see on definite. <laughs> yes, it's an address that holds a lot of soul, but I don't think anybody ever did something with it. It's funny. This is this is funny because that address is not actually used on definite. Anyway, you, do we have USDC on definite? Yeah, but it has a different might be something different. But doesn't matter, I'm gonna use it anyway because we're indefinite, it's just testing. We create an account for this token and for this user, maybe it's a scam coin, but it doesn't matter because it's indefinite. And I might need to set the fee payer manually to my helper, then that should work. Yes, wonderful. So now I should have a token account with no tokens in it. Here, if I go to tokens, I should see that I have zero USDC. And if I go here and click that again, then I should see here. There we go. Now we get a response or now we get a value in our response here. Response value. This is an array of accounts. So account and pub key pairs. Perfect. So we already get the data of the account as well, which is great. And we can once again do the exercise of finding out how many tokens are in a token account. I should know this by now, but I don't know it enough that I know it by heart. So I will look it up and I'm hoping that both of the programs do it the same way. You will also need to check that. First check the token and then the 22 state. At some point, you know where to look. So for the account, that's for the mint, that's for the mint. For the account, we have the amount after two pub keys. So that's byte 64 and eight bytes. And here in the 22, I hope it does it the same way. Mint and account. We have again the mint, the owner and the account. So it does it the same way. Perfect. I can always just read eight bytes starting at offset 64. But first we need to get that stuff out. Oh, cool. It's already properly typed. I love it. Account dot account. Well, what's the account public key pair called? What do you call that thing? Is there a better name for that? I mean, the account has the account info and the public key. Is there a better way for that than account? Because account.account just looks weird. I'm just gonna call it A. Because <laughs> that makes it better. 
and in that account we have the data we're not interested in lamperts that's like the sole amount and that's exactly what we want to recover essentially for that we need to know if we can close that token account and that should be a buffer i hope yeah it's a buffer so that we can just read big int 64 little endian at offset 64. wonderful that should give me the tokens or the token amount then if the amount is zero you don't like that because that's a big int how about that wait would that work though that would also work i mean that looks nicer i'm not sure if it does the thing that it's supposed to do but we will test it in a second anyway so if we don't have an amount aka it's empty i return the pub key maybe and else i return null but then i still need to filter so that's also stupid i'm going to do it that way then that empty accounts is a freaking pop key array empty accounts push me this thing okay that should work now and then i should have the empty accounts let's see if that works found one empty token accounts wonderful <laughs> so that seems to work just to test because it's always good to test that, especially if you have, you know, test set of one. This could still be, you know, not working. So I at least want to have the negative case as well. But for that, I need a token. So SBL token create token. And it doesn't matter which one. And then I do the same thing as before. Just that I create a token account for this one. And now I should get two. There we go, found two empty token accounts, so that is working. But is it really working? We only figure that out if we make one non-empty. So SBL token mint one of that token into, uh, into this account. Cool. We should now also see that here. Yeah, now we have one token of this unknown token. If I now do this, it should only find one anymore and it only finds one anymore. So that seems to be working. Cool. So then here we return those empty accounts. We create instructions by empty token accounts, mapping each of those pub keys to a create close account instruction with the user, the pub key and the token keg. Now we should probably, to not blow up our transaction, limit the amount of token accounts that we allow here. So I would do something like if empty token accounts is larger than 20 or something. This is a note for myself. I need to be doing stuff here. The easy way to do it right now, something like that, which is, you know, not the cleanest code, but it will work. So the 20 is actually exclusive and here I have a greater so probably do something like this but anyway then we should get a maximum of 20 instructions and then we add those instructions to the transaction like so add instructions set the fee payer and send it and here I can properly have my x now but this message isn't shown anywhere so that's a bit annoying but anyway does that work would that thing actually work? I don't know. It does have a close account instruction. I don't know why Phantom doesn't want to simulate this. Unexpected error. We are working on DefNet, right? Yeah. I'm going to get a different wallet. There we go. Imported it here. Solfair does show that I have zero USDC here. Nice. So we're just going to use Solfair then. For development purposes, Solfair is just nicer. Okay. What happens if I use software? Um, it tells me unknown, unknown, simulation failed. And if I still approve, probably nothing happens as with Phantom because again, it can't get the transaction through. But with software, I can at least get me the payload real quick, which I could also just get from the network inspector if I hit that button, because then I get that action. And the response here it all is all is also my transaction. I could also just use that and go to the inspector. What's the problem with the simulation? Invalid account data for instruction. It doesn't like my close account doesn't like the 
account data. Oh, maybe I got the parameters wrong. Hold on. This thing is the token mint. Yeah, I'm, I'm messing something up here. Hold on. Definitely bug on my side. So I wasn't paying much attention to here. So the account too close. That should be the pub key. The destination should be the user. The authority should also be the user. We don't need freaking multi six, but then I do want the token program. That's how we gotta do it. Okay, that makes way more sense. And with that, hopefully, if we go here again, that should then hopefully let us clean up properly. Yes, there we go. So we see we get Sol back and there is no change to our USDC amount, but software shows us this because there is some change to that token account. And the change is it's being closed. So, Let's recheck that and check out how Phantom displays that. Phantom still says, I don't like this. Sure Phantom, sure Phantom. I mean, but this time it should work. That's the source, that's the destination, that's the owner. So yeah, this should actually work Phantom. I'll confirm it anyway. Phantom really doesn't like it, no? Phantom is like, no, I don't allow that. I wonder why, I wonder why this doesn't work on Phantom. See, if you build a productive blink, then you need to test, wow, I'm really yellow compared to that white screen. Holy shit. It's a nice tan, right? Not, whatever. What I'm saying is, you need to test with different wallets. You can't just be like, oh, it works on Soulflare, because people will be like, it doesn't work on Phantom. And if it works on Phantom, it doesn't work on Soulflare. Can you make it work on Backpack? Unable to confirm. It's weird though, because with software that I can't connect, it's getting fewer and fewer wallets here. What the hell? Where did my so There we go. With solve? What? Now it failed to fetch? Am I getting rate limited now? No, but I have zero empty token accounts, which does mean that the transaction actually did go through. Let's check. Do we have a recent transaction here? Yeah, two minutes ago. It actually did go through. Phantom just was like, nye, 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 nye. but then it confirmed anyway. It just weirdly, the blink also didn't want to confirm it. That went through. Okay, back to, I'll create you another account. There you go. So sure we can do that thing again. So I want to have zero use to see again. And I clean up. There we go. Now it looks better. I approve. Can you confirm this one? Are you trying to confirm on mainnet? Is that what you're doing? Yeah. You're trying to confirm this on mainnet. So this page is set to mainnet. So obviously it will not manage to confirm this transaction. It won't get a confirmation for this transaction because this transaction lives on DevNet, but on DevNet it went through. Okay, so that explains why we don't find a signature for that here, why that stays in executing and then fails. Good to know. So if you want to test with dial.to, you got to test on mainnet apparently, or, you know, manually check that transaction, which is what I'm doing. So that's fine. But you need to be aware of that, right? A beginner dev would be like, well, why is it not, is this not working? No, 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 no. No, it's just that side is on mainnet. Your server is on DevNet. Your wallet is on DevNet, but this site is not on DevNet. That's why this site won't confirm it for you. So in our case, we operate on DevNet, but the action client, it operates on mainnet. Or at least, well, not really, because it also operates on DevNet because the wallet is set to DevNet. Maybe that explains why Phantom displays it so weirdly, because the site, the dial.to tells Phantom, hey, we are on mainnet, but Phantom is still submitting it to DevNet. This is so weird. Hold on. So if I were on this one, I need another one. It doesn't tell me which cluster we're on. But on the other hand, hold on. What if you were set to mainnet as well? What would you show then? Then you would show the same thing. I mean, here it makes sense because here it shouldn't work because here... Oh no, wait, 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 wait. Ah, I get it, I get it, I get it. Because... As we also saw last time, this site doesn't do the thing that it's supposed to do, which is replacing the block hash. So it still uses my block hash, but Phantom is like, we're on mainnet. 
and on mainnet this block hash doesn't exist. But if I confirm it, then I get this signature and this signature is not for a valid transaction on mainnet, but it is for a valid transaction on DevNet. Even if Phantom is like, we can't fetch network feed, like it's not a valid transaction essentially is what it says. If I confirm it anyway, I produce a signature and even though the signature, ah, I see what's happening because it's set to, oh, this is so complicated, but I think I know what's going on here. And that's where I started to go on a detour discussing transaction signing on different clusters and just Solana security topics, which I think is a very important topic. But since it doesn't have anything to do with Blinks, I decided to make it its own separate video. So if you want to check that out, it's here. Just click that thing or the link in the description to go on that detour with me and learn about Solana transaction signing. If you're just here for Blinks, just keep watching this video. Otherwise, I do encourage you to watch in chronological order. So go there and come back later. Let's go back to Blinks again and see how we can improve our Blink. I mean, do we want to go through that part? Kind of want to also do that part. Let's, I want to have two buttons and the cleanup, I don't like how it looks. Let's do token kek and 22. Let's call it token and token 22 because users don't know what token kek is. They might know what token 22 is. Okay, anyway, so let's get that URL parameter for program. Gotta make a variable for that. Token program, which is check if the program string is token 22. That will do. And that way we should also support the other token program now. So let's quickly SBL token, create token for this one, token Z. So we created this token and then as before this again with program ID this. Boom. So now we can for token and token 2022 redeem, let's see that still works we redeem one token account and token 2022 that also works it's a different one and we redeem that if i approve that then i don't see it because this site is on mainnet really annoying for development can i change that not really right but i can manually go here check the latest transaction where I see that this token account was closed with the new token program. There we go. Also that works. Nice. So I would say we have a working somewhat nice blink. What do I now need to do to get less yellow? To get this, I mean, as yellow as this freaking orange bar, what the hell? What do I need to do to, to actually get this blink live? I mean, for one, I need to get it away from localhost. So maybe start with that. Should I host it on Versal or something again? Yeah, let's do that. Let's get that public. If you redeem a blink. Now we should have that here. Mm -hmm. I hope I didn't commit anything weird. Add a new project. If you redeem a blink. If you redeem a blink. Wonderful. Why not? Deploy. What could possibly go wrong? Many things. Many things can go wrong. Creating an optimized production build. I mean, that sounds good. Nice. I love it when stuff works out of the box. So I don't really want to change that part. That's the link. All I need is the API. So the slash API slash action, I called it. Yes. So theoretically, if I go here and I enter this part, Interesting. It tells me that this is all unknown, but if I say API action, there we go. Then at least the one action it can do. So that's all valid. That, that's cool. It does some validation checks. The get, the post, the options and the post for the other action all seem to work. So now even without running it locally, right? I, I stopped my local server. This can now 
be served and it should still work. See, same thing. Nice. Let's not do that. But that's just the action. I cannot like directly share that. I mean, I can, it's an action, the action works, but it's not a blink. It's just the action part of the blink. The blink really only becomes this nice thing, right? This, this thing, if you share a link to that address and it automatically resolves to this. And that is done using this actions JSON. So the actions JSON allows an application to instruct clients on what website URL support actions and provide a mapping that can be used to perform the get request. So depending on where I link to, that should actually be resolved to a specific action. And that's what I define in those actions JSON. For instance, if I link to just, you know, my fee redeemer versal app that actually does nothing by itself, maybe I should write something here. But if I link to that, it should resolve into a blink that actually calls my API. And for that, I need to specify such an actions JSON. Should be stored, be universally accessible at the root of the domain. So that should be my Fiorinima Blink Versal app slash actions JSON. And it also needs to have all of the correct headers for the course headers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so how do we build such a thing? To map a set of websites relative paths to a set of other paths. We can use wildcards. Query parameters are always preserved and appended to the mapped URL. That's also interesting. So if I have more query parameters, then they are just added. The path has changed, but they're still added at the new path. So the actions JSON then consists out of such a rules array with those rules where each path pattern is resolved to the following API. So in the simplest case, I will have one rule. This matches to this. And in my very, very simplest case, I will just have all the links to my site map to my one action. So I would have one rule where slash wildcard maps to API action. What did I call it? Slash API slash action. And I don't need the remaining path here. Could add that wildcard to have the same stuff as here but I don't need to because I just want that path. So that's the simplest, the simplest case. We add that actions JSON and we're ready, which means slash actions JSON should give me, damn it. Can't just put that in there. Should have tried it locally, damn it. Besides it wouldn't have worked with the course headers anyway. So I will need to do that differently. And I think I'm gonna be lazy again and cheat and see how they do it. They have an actions JSON and that's a folder name. And then the route for that one is basically giving that. Yeah. And then I can do the same with the course headers and I can do the options as well. So I'm got, just gonna copy that. Just gonna borrow some code here. So in the app, new folder actions JSON and in here route and I can again do something different for the options and not serve the actions, but you know, whatever, if I add that to the payload, it's fine. So my payload again, I just need map all routes to an action. I just want slash action for all of them. That's what I want. One single action, all the paths with that. Let's try that. Oh, and by the way, there is, yeah, there's a blink inspector that Nick built. Go to the Blink Inspector and add my URL. Nice. Now I have a valid actions JSON file. Wait, why is that not working now? Oh, because I said action JSON. Ay, ay, ay. There we go. Would it have worked otherwise before? I don't know. Maybe I just mistyped it. Anyway, but now I have it also with the correct course headers. The get endpoint doesn't work. I think I am okay with that though, because the get endpoint for that shouldn't work. Only the get endpoint for API action should work. There I have a actions JSON and there the get works. And I have two actions. Oh, and I can directly test this here to check. Yeah, I would close zero token accounts 
but I get a valid response with a random account address. So this basically just, you know, whatever I put in here, that's what it sends to the, as an address, as an account to then build the transaction. So that's actually quite cool. This uh, Blinks inspector can recommend that tool. We'll link it in the description if I don't forget. Yeah, and since everything is green, I think should be fine. So here you say course is valid, but the response data, we get an error. What does it return? Rules. Maybe that's not a valid, not a valid rule. And this is very difficult for me to test right now because I mean, how would I? Validate structure of the return data. So that seems, it seems valid. The structure seems valid, but is, does it also work? We don't know. This has me a bit skeptical here that it says error. I don't know why though. Anyway, add API action. This action has not been registered. Only use it if you trust the source. This action will not unfurl unf URL on X until it's registered. So how do I register it? As one last thing, because we've been recording for three hours already. How do I register actions? So dialect action registry. There, dial to register. Action registry, alpha phase. Due to a high volume of inbound submissions, it takes a few days for approval. Thank you for your patience. We are working on automating the registry to be fully streamlined. During this alpha phase, approximately five to 10 new actions will be accepted per week. Please note that not all submissions will be accepted. We prioritize those that demonstrate innovative use cases or have strong business ready applications. This is a very strong business ready application. I can close empty token accounts, which gets you actual money, which is business. You get sold, that's business. Business, business, business. If your submission is rejected and you wish to appeal, please open a ticket on Discord and provide detailed information regarding your submission. Please follow these general guidelines. Ah, oh, versal.app, fly.io or fly.dev URLs are not accept, god damn it. Okay, so with a versal.app, uh, we can't register a blink. Fine, fine dialect, fine. We shall get our own domain, except I don't want to. URLs are ready in our registry will automatically be declined. I mean, that kind of makes sense because you don't want to double register. Provide a sample URL you want to tweet to ensure accurate mapping between blink and action. See, but here is still my question. Like, how can I properly test this? How can I test what my blink would be unfurled as? Can I set this thing to a mode where it just allows any kind of blink? No. Okay, so basically, I need a proper URL. This feels like they're mocking me because I could, you know, just map the domain there or something. I guess they want to make it difficult for people to actually, you know, develop links such that not everybody publishes blinks, which fair enough. Then I just don't publish a blink. It's a nice little blink. If you ask me, it gets you soul. But I can't make it work because I would need my own freaking domain and I'm not willing to pay for a domain just for hosting my bling. So Landy.dev for 20 freaking dollars. I mean, there I certainly get cheaper ones. So Landy.dev for eight euros a year. So Versal has quite some markup. Well, I guess we buy a domain. Just bought it. There we go. Set the following record on your DNS. We need an A-type record and I go to probably Versal's DNS record or versus servers. I just redirect my domain now to Versal or the other way around. I make an entry for my domain name to the type IP of Versal. Valid configuration, redirects to www.solendi.dev. Generating a certificate. Set the following record to your DNS provider to continue. Ah, there we go. So this is so absolutely freaking pointless just because I can't directly link to Versal links, I now need to redirect from an actual domain that I have. So I had to buy a domain. Fine. The things you got to do for making blinks work, man. There we go. So current deployment is at www.solendi.dev, but that doesn't resolve. Maybe I just need to give it some time. All right. But once that works, let's assume I would get it to work. I would fill this out, briefly explain your action. 
this action. It's not a particularly fancy blink, but it is a blink. Action API URL would then be this API slash action, I think, not sure, but that's what that would be probably. And then the blink URL is what I would share. And that would probably be this. And I don't know. Should I submit this? No, I'll wait until this thing actually works. Oh, look at this. Now, solandi.dev translates to this virtual app. So I can go to solandi.dev slash API slash action. And I should find my action wonderful, which also means if I enter this, there we go. That looks good. And that is still weird. Don't ask me why. But yeah, that, that thing works. It's now at solandi.dev, which means that now I can submit this solandi.dev API action, solandi.dev as the link. I'm gonna submit this. We will see what happens. Thank you for applying to become a verified blockchain links developer. You will receive a confirmation telegram message or email. I hope email, telegram is like just spam for me. Cool, so this seems to, uh, Worked. I had to get myself a domain for this, but one of the things you gotta do to be a verified blockchain links developer. And we will see if this becomes verified. Certainly not today, so I'll keep you updated in a future video or on X. Let's be honest, I don't make it too important that this blink gets live. I hope that you learned something though. I hope that you learned how to build a proper blink also with this actions chasing of course, those rules, they can be way more complicated, but this is web two stuff. It's not very Solana specific. So I'm pretty sure that you will figure it out if you have like more complicated paths here. Parameters are relayed anyway. And the paths here, I mean, that wildcard I could now also have here. So if I go to solandi.dev slash something, something, then it will find the action at solandi.dev slash API slash action slash something, something. Right, it's pretty self-explanatory. Anyway, I keep it like this. We just have one action. All the patterns just go to this one action. And in the future, it might change. I can update this. That's a cool thing. It's dynamic, yo, because we serve it every time. But sadly, not so cool. I cannot, you know, tell the user directly how many, how many token accounts are being closed. Like, I don't really get why I need to provide a message because the message is not shown anywhere anyway. It's just in the response, but it's just the transaction that comes here anyway. And then I can, I don't know, do nothing with it. So there, I'm really missing something in the blink spec of properly like getting error messages across or even just notification messages. Cause it can't be that I just get that transaction and that that's it. I, this is not very smart for a smart message, right? blinks but with the current spec that's all we can do so yeah anyway not going there thanks for watching i want to end because god damn i'm hot yeah thanks for watching I, I hope that you learned something i hope that blinks make sense and for the things i mean there are some things that are really nice that you can do with them they're not as flexible as i would like them to be but the value they add for being able to interact with the blockchain directly from X or in the future different platforms. Probably really something cool. So that's why I'm still a fan of Blinks, even though the spec is somewhat letting me down in my creative freedom as a dev, which could also be for security reasons. But no, like a warning, come on, let me give the user, let me tell the user that he can click the button again to redeem more and stuff like that. Come on, let me do that. Anyway, I didn't properly test my blink. I also didn't add like any try catch stuff that I should probably do if I actually published this. But on the other hand, I mean, meh, if you hack my blink, yeah. It's not like there are any funds from me in this. It's just, if you try hack it to build your transaction differently, it's still you signing that transaction anyway. So like, what do I have to lose? Nothing, I'm fine with that. Yeah, as always, more videos like this one. Subscribe, see you in the next one. I'm a bit annoyed by having to buy my own domain for this, but you know, things you gotta do. I hope I get it to work and we'll see if I get it to work. Don't make it too important. I just make it important that you know how to build blinks. And with that, I'm signing off. Bye.